my pie people is the average man here. Uh, this video is going to accompany a blog post uh, about creating a temperature display monitor um, using an easy as pie board. Um, details on that will be on the site, I'll, I'll give the address in details. Uh, it's average man versus raspberry pi .com. Um, For now, I just want to get straight into the build for this. Uh, like I say, if you want the details of you know, the kind of the ampage, the resistance used, everything else, it's all going to be on the blog. And this is just going to show you how to put it together. So, uh, I've got a Raspberry Pi here. I've got two MCP23017 chips. Chuck these boys over here. I've got a slice of pie that's just going to make life a bit easier to break out some of the lines I need. I've got a load of jumper wires. It's going to get messy, but stay with me, you can always rewind. And over here, I've got I've kind of put together a couple of prototype boards. Uh, mainly this bit here, you need to have quite a lot of pins. Um, I've already done this bit, so you've got three seven-segment displays or eight-segment, I guess. Um, and I've got some resistors in there as well. Um, they're 560 ohm. Um, that'll all be explained on the blog as well. But as you can see, I've just broken those out there, so that's all done rather than waste time doing that. So first things first, let's get set up. There's my pie. Slice of pie is going to help break out the pins. I can't be asked to be messing around in there. That's too much like hard work. So let's push this one in here now. Okay. Slice of pie is ready. There we go. And as you can see, if I grab a pen, I'll use my fat fingers. Um, we're going to be using the SCL and SDA lines here. And then on the other side, we're just going to be breaking out the ground and the 5 volt as well. And again, while we're using 5 volt, it's all going to be on the blog. Okay, bear with me because my phone won't let me pause now. Thank you, Android 4.4 KitKat. No good. Uh, okay, so back to the breadboards here. I'm going to push these MCP chips in, and what you want, you'll notice on these chips, there's. I'll try and get that up close. There's like a little, little kind of notch in one side that you'll see, and we're going to put that to the left. So if you're just kind of copying, following along, do that as well. And that should just piss straight in there. Like that one there. And we'll put the other one, get the notch around the right way. Get the other one in there as well. Okay. Now let's see if I can, hopefully, hopefully that's clear enough. So you're going to have some jumpers. You're going to have um, male-to-male jumpers. Uh, we don't need any female ends here, so it's all... It's all just the male pin ends with these ones. So simply get the, get the ground pin here on the slicer pie. Actually, let's use a, let's just do the five volt because it's red. Five volt here and break that out to the power line there. Simple, okay. Uh, next one, let's use brown. Um, I'm sure electricians wouldn't agree. Into the ground on the slicer pie. There it is, yeah. And then break that out again to the blue ground line. Um, as you can see there, yeah, Nick on the breadboard. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, only two more wires I've got to go into the slice of pie, so I like to use yellow for other wires. So uh, let's try and make this a bit clearer. We have an SDA line, also there, 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 just below, as you can see that. And I'm going to, we need to kind of break that one out, so I'm going to put that one here, right in the end of the breadboard. That's a bit better um, because we're going to need to get a few of those. Um, and SCL next to the SDA on the slicer pie, just next to it there. Again, I'll try and show you just there SCL, SDA. Yeah, <coughs> so SCL is going to go just to the right of our SDA. So we can we can use these pins now to kind of get because each one of these chips needs an SCL and an SDA. We've only got one line coming out of slicer pie, so we're going to break that out of these lines here and push them in there. It will all make sense in the end. Okay, that's that bit done. The breadboard's ready to go. Um, so we'll just dive straight into wiring up the MCP. Like I say, it's going to get messy. Um, I always use jumper wires. I haven't really got into those other wires that people use. Probably will at some point, but uh, we'll do that at some point there. Okay, so MCP, let's come in close. You've got... Oh, the first eight along the top here. Hang on, let's move the camera. Uh, that's a bit better. Let's do that. Okay. You got from from left to right. You got there's a notch here, 
and you've got the top eight here. Now that is going to be bank A. So the, top, the first eight are actually your input outputs here, and the same on the bottom side as well. So the left side of it's quite easy because you know that's just your inputs and outputs. Uh, like I say, the top part, if the notch is here, the top part is bank A when you're addressing it in the code, and the bottom part is bank B. Okay, so simple as that. Um, the top's reasonably easy. So the fur, well, so the last three pins here are your address pins. So when you see that zero times twenty or zero times twenty-one or whatever the address is. This is what defines that. So, um, for example, if you put the these three pins to ground, the address for this chip will be uh, zero times twenty. And if you did say ground, ground, and then your five volt power, um, that would be zero times twenty one. And that way, you can address each chip differently to do something different, rather than you know if you put the same address on, they're going to clash. So that, that's the whole point of that. <coughs> um, so that's what we're going to do there. And, and then just the the fourth one from the right is going to go to power, that's the reset pin, that's going to go to power and then on the bottom, um, on the right hand side we don't connect the first one here um, the next one along we connect to SDA the one after that is SCL the one after that we don't connect to anything the one after that is ground and the one after that is power ok so I'm going to do this now anyway but I just thought I'd kind of give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to do let's try and get my camera to sit up straight again mm, ok, hopefully that's clear there um, try and I've got a tripod and the legs are getting in the way. Oh, problems we have. Okay, so let's do the top half of the MCP first. Let's just do the first one and then we can do the second one. So <coughs> let's do the address pins. So for this first one, well, they're all going to ground. So from the right hand side, the first pin is going to ground. So let's connect into our blue line there. Uh, let's get another one. The Second pin there, also going to ground. It's going to get messy, guys. Um, and the third one going to ground. So that's going to give us address 0 times 2, 0, or 0x, zero 2, 0. Uh, I'm not sure what the correct way of saying that is. Uh, and the last one there is just going to go 5 volt. That's our reset pin. So let's go just after that. There. And that's going to 5 volt, which is our power line there. And that's all you need to do for the top half, okay? <coughs> Great. So, uh, moving on to the bottom half. Uh, let's use yellow again, because I was not to confuse ourselves. Uh, so the first one we're going to ignore. This one here. Not worried about that one. I don't want to touch that. Uh, the second one, let's go back to my map, is SDA. Now, if we go back here, this is the SDA we broke it here. So the SDA is the lower one. And it is, so SDA is on the left for us, so I'm going to push that in, sorry you can't see anything can you? SDA is going to go in here, yeah. and the next one is SCL, and let's use another, another colour, ok, so the one next to SDA is SCL here, so I'm going to go into the next pin, there it goes, SCL was the one next to SDA, so that's going to go I'm oh, sorry, you can't always see this. That's just going to go in there next to it because we broke out the STL and SDA from there. Okay, uh, that's SCL, SDA, SCL. Uh, yeah, that's that bit done. Okay, next one we don't connect, and then we've got the negative and positive. So let's get a low colour for. Okay, so this one here afterwards we're not connecting that, and then this one we're going to go straight to negative. So just plugged it in there. Okay, there it is, and that's going to go to negative. Okay, now we're getting messy. Okay, and then the next one after that just goes to the power. Push that in next to it, and the power goes there. <coughs> you might be thinking, oh, it's not too bad, but don't forget we've got eight. Outputs here, or inputs, whatever you want, uh, and eight here as well to connect. So, there's 16 more cables to come out of this chip yet. Um, but you know, as long as you know where they're going, there's no, there's no reason why this doesn't work. Um, so, we'll do exactly the same. Oh, we'll do exactly the same for the second chip as well. Um, I'm going to be at a bit of an angle now. So, let's just whiz through this one. So, like I said before, we've got the first three here in the address pins. So, I'm going to do this one here. You're considering one, two, three. First one's going to go to negative or ground, sorry. 
second one's also going to ground. But in order to give it a different address, we need to go to positive. So you can add quite a few of these chips if you wanted to. Um, depending on how much power you've got, you probably have to go to an external power supply after a certain amount, but we're going to get away with two here, so that's fine. So we've got ground, ground power, um, and that gives us address 21. Okay, um, <coughs> just like the last one, we've got the reset pin to the left of all those, which goes to power as well. So, plug that in there. No fingers and thumbs today. Um, actually, let's push these back a bit. Let's just pull these out of the way so we can see what we're doing. That's better. Yeah, so that power on the fourth one there is going to power. <coughs> okay, power, address, address, address. Done. Top half. Bottom half, same again. Um, so, first pin from the left, nothing. Um, next pin in is SDA. So let's get one in there. Uh, one, two, get there. And SDA, I'll just check again. Right there. So SDA was the lower cable here. So SDA is the left. Okay. So SDA here is going into our left jumper here because that's our SDA kind of breakout as such. What we've done there. <coughs> Sorry about the cough, guys. I'm, I've had this for weeks. So I should probably go to the doctor. Um, SCL is the next one. I should probably check what these are. What they stand for? Serial something. Um, all I know is that you need to work. So this goes into the next one here. Again, just like the last one, because we broke it out. Uh, this breadboard's not doing too well, it's not very healthy. There we go. Yeah, so I've got this cable here. Connected those. Um, next one we don't connect. And then we've got the negative and positive cables. So we don't want to connect to this one. So we skip a hole. Uh, and that's going to ground. Anywhere I do. And then a nice bright colour for power. Again, the next one here, that there is going to power. So we're nearly done. Um, so that, that just, that, that's kind of got your, your chip set up now. If we were to go into the code and do a bit of I2C detect, um, you'd see those addresses come up, or you should see those addresses come up, um, unless you've done something wrong, or in fact, I've done something wrong, but hopefully this is all correct, because I've just done this before um, I shot this video. <coughs> okay, so um, we've already, well I've already got these segments wired up, so all we do is now we just need to connect these out outputs into these pins, yeah, and then uh, there's one more bit to do around um, ground, because these are common cathode, hopefully I've got this the right way around, or there'll be a comment on the screen right now telling you otherwise. Um, and how these work, uh, if I, oh, I'll have to draw a picture, well it is you've got five pins on the bottom here for each segment and five on the top, and let me just grab a spare one and you can see what I mean. So there it is, five there, five there, and obviously that's the right way around because you've got the decimal on the bottom, um, so for, we'll, we'll be using that one as well because I'm mean, you know, 48.1 or whatever the temperature is going to be. Okay, so they're plugged in, and like I say, you've got 10 pins, 5 on each side. The bottom middle one, that's your kind of common connection. Okay, so that's one for us, uh, common cathode, that's going to ground. So whilst I've broken these resistors out to so this part here, this isn't broken out, so all we need to do for each one, I might as well do this now, I'm just going to put a, oh, it's fiddly, put a jumper in, if you can see that, to the middle pin, and put that to ground, um, which we'll put over here for now. And while we're at it, let's just break out the ground to there. So we're going to go up here, grab some ground, and then push that down here. Hopefully, there you go. That makes sense. So we're just breaking out that ground again so that this is actually connected to something. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's do the other two. We'll use three segments so we can have a temperature of you know, 40 point something. It makes it a bit more fun. So, I'm sure there's a few hecklers out there saying, well, you don't need to check the temperature of the pie, but us X windows gamers, overclockers, you know, we like to, uh, we like to keep an eye on temperatures, no matter how irrelevant it is, because it makes us happy. So, uh, do the same for the third one. Middle pins, so you've got five pins, 
the outer two are connected to the resistors which we're going to connect the inputs to and like I say these ones just going to ground sorry if these get in the way of the camera um, I'm sure I'll find a better way soon okay so let's track back so remember I said that the MCP outputs are on either side first eight here and the top bank uh, is bank A and the bottom is bank B so to kind of be logical we're going to connect this one to bank A of the first chip this one to bank B of the first chip and then uh, this one to bank A of the second chip it just kind of makes sense so technically we've got spare outputs on the second chip but we're not going to use them okay so it's just a case of connecting it up um, direction is so you've got bank A at the bottom no, sorry bank A at the top and it goes from uh, let's get my pen might make it a bit clearer it goes from 0 to 7 so it kind of goes anti-clockwise and then 0 to 7 on the bottom so bank A 0 bank A 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and then bank B 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so to keep things a bit easier when we're uh, doing the code we'll try and do it in that order um, so with these segments we'll be going uh, let's put it there we'll be going bank A 1 2 uh, three, four. That's right. Yeah. Uh, five, six, seven. Hang on. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that will take up the bank A of the MCP. This one will do the same with bank B again, it's anti-clockwise. So one to f one to four. Uh, oh, sorry, zero, zero to three, and then four to seven here. Uh, and then the last one will do exactly the same thing as we did with the first one, but with just the other chip. <coughs> All will become clear. And if not, drop me a comment. So, bank A on the top, start with zero, which is, let's just count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because there's eight pins, right? Let's just check that. Yes. Yep, that's right, okay. So, here comes the mess. Uh, that pin will go to the first leg down here. Sorry about my fat fingers getting in the way. There you go. So what I've done, as you can see that first pin there goes to the first pin there because it goes 0 to 7. Yeah? Okay. I'll, just, I'll stop explaining that now because if you haven't got that by now then just drop me a comment and I'll, I'll try and make it clearer. But there will be some diagrams in the blog as well, um, so really you can't go wrong. So there we go. So I'm, I'm shooting for the second pin there on the segment and that's going up to the second pin next to the MCP just like that see that there, that's the second one and the same there, okay so let's go for it um, so third pin there then we're going to skip we're going to skip one here because you've kind of got two then a gap then two with the resistors because remember that middle pin is our ground that's our kind of common ground that it uses and we just fire the power in where we want the LED to light up so as you can see there's a gap that's the third one and the next one's going to go to that so back to the MCP fourth pin goes in just like that and then next to the one we just done like so there we go Hopefully, that makes sense. <coughs> that's done for. Uh, and then we're going to go to the... We're going to carry on with the MCP, so that's quite logical with the MCP. Let's go to the next pin along. On bank A. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the furthest right here. So... I'm not sure I'll get it right. There we go, and that's connected to that resistor on the end there. Just like that, okay. Same kind of thing. Next one on the MCP. One again. Next one again. Remember, miss. So, so sorry, I forgot to cover that. So, on the top, you've also got. A fifth pin in the middle there as such. So you've got the two either side that we're connecting to the LEDs and in the middle there you've got another pin. I haven't used that. <coughs> I didn't really know how to use these and I experimented and found out. Um, and I haven't used that middle pin. I, the way I see it, I think you can connect the power your kind of common common wire either side. So I've connected it to the bottom middle one here. Um, but I don't see any benefit in adding anything 
as well, you know, doing two at once. So I've just left that blank and it's worked fine for me. So um, if anyone knows, I'd, I'd be interested as to why there is um, almost like a, a tenth pin that you don't really need to use up there. Um, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be interested, so if anyone does know, please please add a comment and uh, I'll send you a segment for free. For, I'll tell you what, there you go, first person to tell me why there's two common points, um, I'll send you one of these segments you can have a play. How does that sound? Sounds like a deal to me. So, here we go. We've got all eight connections now hooked up. Yeah, they're going through the resistor into the pin, okay? Which means, if you can see it from afar there, our entire bank A of eight outputs is now taken up. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is move on to bank B, <coughs> which is simply just below that. Um, and bank B goes from left to right. So whereas, uh, where's my pen? Whereas bank A went from zero to seven, as in eight outputs, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one starts on the left and does the same thing but going that way. So it's kind of like an anti clockwise system. So from the uh, left, let's try that's getting fiddly now. From the left, I've put that one in. So that is our first pin. And again, the first pin is going to start exactly the same way on the segment display. So that's going to go. You'll see it in a second. That's going to go there again. Yeah, just like last time. Okay. So again, let's steam through it. I'll start from this end this time. Second pin in. Up to the MCP. I put the yellow one next to the red one there, and that's just starting to go along that direction. Not that hard, eh? Okay, so again, miss, miss one, because we've got the common um, in there, and then just, just going to keep going now. Put that one in there. Fourth one in the bottom here. Put that in here. Okay, now going to the top again, we think of it as anti-clockwise, so we're going to start from, oh, we can't see anything now, um, start from the left, like so, and just carrying on with the MCP, just in a row like that. And again, now the MCP does have some little brothers, little brothers and sisters. Um, so this is dip format, <coughs> which is dual inline package. And that's the kind of size, you know, breadboardy kind of 0.1 size. Um, there is alternative, so there's, there's a, a format I've come across. I don't know a lot about this, but there's a format I've come across. Uh, it's called SOIC, S -O -I -C, which is a uh, small outline integrated circuit, which is just a tiny version of these. Um, I'll tell you what, here you go, look. If you're interested, that's a that's a SOIC. That's the same kind of thing. That's a port expander, and that was a right pain to solder. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, I'll cover those in a separate blog. So if you go to Average Man versus Raspberry Pi .com, <coughs> you'll see those as well. So if you're looking for a small project, something a little bit more low profile, maybe get involved with those. Okay, so that's the first one done. So that MCP on the left there. Let's have a little move around. The MCP on the left. Oh, so you probably can't see it very well. We're done with that now. We've got all the out outputs there, everything's set up. That one is done. All that's left to do is do exactly the same thing, but just for this last segment. Um, so remember, bank A is at the top, uh, going anti clockwise. So um, let's count again for the second chip. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'll start in there. And again, always think anti clockwise, starting uh, bottom left with the segments. I'm going to put that one in in there. Okay. And let's just carry that on. Second pin. I won't show the code or it work in this video. What I'll probably do is a part two because um, this will be a lot easier to manage the videos. I'm no longer a Windows machine person, so <coughs> Windows Movie Maker is out of reach. I'm a, I'm a pure Chromebook person for my sins. Um, so it's easier for me just to do separate videos. But it's like I say, check out the blog, it's all going to be covered. Remember, I've left a gap here, because we've got the common pin going in the middle there, so here we go. Number four. Up to the fourth one here, going anti-clockwise again. Okay, um, that's the bottom lot done. Top lot. 
in there and in there Another one there nearly there, ok two more to go and I've only got three more wires left, that's handy um, again leaving the gap I'm going to go to the last two on the left I'm carrying on with the MCP just moving along that bank and you can you can use if you want to use common anode, so have a a common um, a common power through this through this middle this middle pin. You can and then you can just use grounds. So all your LEDs they're all getting power, but they need to kind of be grounded to, to light rather than me pushing power into them. You can do it that way as well. Um, just change the code a bit. So depending on what you've got at home or if you're not sure what to order, um, give me a comment if you want to get the same thing as I have. Uh, these are from eBay. They're pretty cheap. I've got ten for like a few quid. Um, so there you go. <coughs> That's that done. Uh, we're all wired up. The so like I said, we're only using the top bank of this MCP. So we've actually got eight spare outputs if you really wanted to to use them. Um, there. And what I do, I'm going to finish this video here. There's not a lot more to do in terms of just the build. I'm going to push it out of the way. But th this is what we're looking at. So we're kind of we're kind of done there. Yeah. Um, if anything's not clear, like I say, just drop me a comment. Or email me anything you want. Twitter's pretty good. Catch me on. And when that's done, this is what I'm going to be moving to. So this is an easy as pie board from a company called Micronauts, um, and it's going to it's going to be a hell of a soldering job. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be basically doing exactly the same thing. I'll just put them into this board. Um, this board's really good because you've got a lot of these lanes where you can kind of put the resistors either side. Um, so I'm going to put the two chips in these IC sockets again. Check out the blog for information on this. I'm going to cover this as well. Uh, and this is where the resistors are going to go. I'm breaking these out. Uh, GPIO will connect here. So this will just snap onto the board. And it will be your your temperature control. Your temperature monitor even. Uh, and then if you you know you want to do a different project, you can just snap it off from the GPIO from this point. Uh, and away you go. So hopefully that was useful. I didn't think it would be very easy to kind of try and follow this in words. So I guess a video is the best way of doing things. Uh, I know it's a long one, but some of the best are. Okay, um, any comments, let me know. Um, on Twitter, Average Man vs. Pi. The blog address again is averageman vs. raspberrypi.com. Uh, I'm on Pinterest. Um, I think my email address is even on the website. If you want to email me directly, I've got some you know, more detailed questions, just let me know. I'll do what I can. Um, again, I am the average man. I've just learned as I go. I'm not an expert, so you know, I might not be able to answer all your questions. Um, but try me. I'll see if I can help. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.